Welcome to Comics TV. We're your guide to the comic book universe, and we're here every single week. I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Steve Prisboa. And each and every week, we try and bring you the hottest and newest up to date books out there on the market. This week, Steve is bringing you Droids, Star Wars number one, and Force Works number one. And I have Cud number five and Armarines number one. Let's take off into our comics news. Topping this week's comic news, Joe Quesada, one of the hottest artists in the field today, has penciled the cover for the X Special Edition number two from Dark Horse Comics. The comic is being given away to retailers with quantities equal to their orders for the Hero Illustrated number 13 as part of a joint promotional between Dark Horse and Sendy Publishing. Besides featuring a Quesada Pamelotti cover, the comic also debuts The Scream, a new entry to the comic's greatest world. The comic itself is written by ex-scribe Stephen Grant, in pencil by Corky Lumkey, and ink by Jordy Insight. Dark Horse will continue the successful comic's greatest world this summer with a new series of books. More on that in the coming weeks. Next we have market share figures for the comic industry. We start this week with 1992 and we end with April of this year. Still leading the pack, but with less market shares is Marvel, currently at 32.88% compared to 45.76% in 1992. Then we have DC, currently with 23.94% up from 19.34% in 1992. Image comes in third with 8.39% of the market, down from 14.79 in 1993, since they had no market in 92. Valiant comes in fourth at this time, with 5.63% in April, up from 4.11 in 1992. Rounding out the group is Dark Horse with 5%, Malibu with 4.07%, and Wizard, Defiant, Viz, Chaos, and Bongo Comics. Red Bullet Comics adds a mature reader label to the second issue of Vendetta, Holy Vindicator. Why you ask? Because when publisher Steve McArdle started Red Bullet, he had no one to answer to. However, now that I have distributed a national circulation of the books, he goes on, I feel I have to take responsibility for my work and its potential audience. Does this mean Red Bullet is going soft? No way, he states. Red Bullet's successful formula will remain unchanged. Powerful, exciting comics that still stay within most boundaries of the comic book code. Vendetta, Holy Vindicator number two, debuts artillery. The chaos mounts as Vendetta's greatest enemy unlocks his identity while he fights for his life. Number two is available through Advanced Comics and Heroes World. 250 and limited to 500 copies only. The buzz is going around about the Wildstorm Set 1 trading cards from Wildstorm Productions, which is Jim Lee's project. From all indications, the set is going to be a huge hit with the fans, provided it comes out when scheduled. There are not quite 100 artists working on the 100 card set. Artists include Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, Travis Cherist, Dwayne Turner, J. Scott Campbell, Brian Stelfries, and many, many more. Among the popular Wildstorm characters featured are members of the Wildcats, Stormwatch, Gen 13, Team 7, and Union and Deathblow. And don't forget their other marketing gimmick, Wildstorm the Game. 
With each card containing rankings to be used in play in this brand new combat game, and every Wildstorm card set issued from here on out, adding to the game, it could be the next gaming hit. Wildstorm Set 1 ships in mid-June. For my first mainstream review this week, I have Star Wars Droids number one from Dark Horse Comics. Dan Thorslin is the artist, or the writer. Bill Hughes is the artist, and Digital Chameleon is the anchor. Cost is $2.95. New storyline for R2-D2 and C-3PO and their new order. They're trying to recover the plans for sto stolen plans for Spaceship Fleet. Now, the story of this one was good. The dialogue was poor to good, the art was good, the interest level was poor to good, the action level was good, the realism was very good from the Star Trek line, or Star Wars line, the humor was good, the color was good. Target audience on this one, I'd have to say science fiction fans or Star Wars fans. Those are about the only ones. Overall great on this one, going poor to good because, eh, the reading was sort of poor in some spots, it, it lacked off, but hey, it's first first issue, try it out if you want. For my second one, Force Works, number one by Marvel. It, writer is Andy Lennon's and artist Tom Teddy, and inker is Ray Garcia. Cost is $3.95, which is $3.94 too expensive. Story outline, various characters like Iron Man, Spider Woman, Wonder Man, and US Agent fight a new enemy called the Scatter. Can they defeat them? Who cares? <laughs> the story in this one was good, but the dialogue was very poor. The art in this one was good, the interest level was very poor. Action level was good, realism was good, humor was poor. The color in this one was very good. Target audience, I would have to say Marvel fans or first time buyers just to try it out. But my overall grade is poor to good because here we go with another book with a new gimmick. This one has a pop-up cover. Ooh, you fold it out and it pops up into a three-dimensional little place setting it looks like. But this book would not be worth anything. I wouldn't pay a buck and a half for this. The only reason I got it is because it is eye-catching with the little pop-up. I gotta admit, that's very eye-catching. That's like the first time that we've had a three-dimensional cover like that. But this was just well overly priced to see characters that you see every single week in different comics. It's not worth it. This one, I would definitely pass on if I were you. Save your money, spend it on something else. So now let's go to our small press and independence. My first book today is called Cut. It's number five from Fantagraphics. Written, drawn, uh, art, all art and everything is, written, uh, is by Terry Laban. It's $2.50. And the main story is about Bob Cudd. He's a performance artist who was shot in the previous issue. And in this story, he continues his, his trek to, to seduce Fila Little. She's the receptionist for his record company. There's backup stories that include Sissy, Fiddler on My Face, and The Moon in the Tree. <laughs> These are pretty funny. Uh, story, all the way down I give it good. Art, dialogue, everything is good. The humor is very good. It's a black and white book. It's for mature readers, people that like hate or eight ball or any of those type books because it's that same kind of humor. They're great stories. They had me laughing out loud while I was reading them. Uh, I definitely recommend picking this one up. It's something that you'll really enjoy if you're an adult and you're mature. If you're not, don't pick it up. Next, I got this week, Armorines, number one from Valiant Comics. It's written by George Gonzalez. Jim Calafiore is the artist, and Rodney Ramos is the anchor. It's $2.25. This is Valiant's newest monthly title. It takes the team on a mission to uh, retrieve uh, the nuclear core from a nuclear submarine that the U.S. Navy had that was sunk out in Australia. Now this is the first test of their underwater uh, usefulness for their for their armory and 
It's part one of three entitled White Death. It's a pretty decent story. The art is good, dialogue is good, interest level good, action level good, realism good. Uh, there's not really that much humor and what there is is kind of poor. Uh, very good color and it's definitely aimed at Valiant readers. Now after all the hype, is this book worth the wait? It wasn't a bad story. It was a bit different than the current Valiant offerings. And as with most new titles, you have to give them a few issues to see whether they're going to be any good. Usually they have enough for about three, four issues. And then after that, you find out whether the storyline can continue. I like it, but we'll give it the final judgment in a few issues. So take a look. This is the review. Each and every week, me and Michael take two books. We both read them and review them. Give us, give you our ideas on them. This week we have Batman Elseworlds, Detective Comics number seven, and Gunfighters in Hell from Rabble Studios. For the first dual review book, Detective Comics Annual, Elseworlds number seven by DC. Chuck Dixon is the writer. Al Katina is the artist and the inker. Cost is $2.95. Leatherwing, Senior Joker, Capitina Felina, and Robin Redblade lead a series of different fights out on the water. This takes back, this, this story take, dates back to when pirates were out on the seas. This story was, I thought was pretty good. It, it, it gave a different view of Batman itself and Robin and Catwoman and the Joker. Um, the dialogue in this one was good. The art was, I, I thought was exceptionally good. Interest level was very good. Action level was very good. Realism was very good. Humor, I gotta go with poor on that one. Uh, color was very good. And I would say target audience, Batman fans, DC fans, or the Elseworld fans. Uh, my overall grade on this one would be very good because I like the Batman series and I like the Elseworld series. And Michael, what did you think about this one? Well, Steve, I will tell you right now, I didn't even finish reading the book. First of all, I thought it was too long. <laughs> Second of all, I tried sitting three times to read it. I, it, it bored me. You could take this story here, this this um, pirate story, and you could take any character. They don't even have to be Batman or any other super character. You could just put anybody in there and make that story. I thought, like a few years ago, I had read Batman. Uh, it was uh, Gotham by Gaslight. Yeah. It was where Batman went back into the Jack the Ripper time, and uh, he was chasing Jack the Ripper. And I thought that was a really good story. But this... I, d I just couldn't get into it. I, I thought it was stupid. It was just like Batman, Robin, uh, the Joker, um, uh, Catwoman. Cat, Catwoman. They were all in the story here. And it was like, it, the story was was goofy. It, it just... Well, they have a few of these Elseworld books. They got one now where Batman is almost like Tarzan oh, yeah. right now out there. But, but this one I, I thought was different because, I mean, you're going back into the pirate time. Right. You know, leather wing. And, I, I thought that the premise for the story was good, but I just thought that it didn't fit Batman. I thought you could have put, you could have made the characters anybody. They could have just been nobody characters and the story still would have worked even if it wasn't Batman. Yeah, but what do you think sells books? Well, obviously, you're not going to put, you're not going to make it Joe Blow, Joe Blow the Pirate. That won't sell, but well, obviously. Well, you don't know, but who's Joe Blow? <laughs> but anyways, I, I didn't like it. So. And I, I did, so, and that's for mine. Now, not for the good book. <laughs> the book that I have is called Gunfighters in Hell, number 205 from Rebel Studios. Um, David Barber and Joe Vigil are the writers. Joe Vigil does the artwork. Two dollars and twenty-five cents. Tex says he's called. Is it exactly what the title says? The title says. Is that what I said? Yeah. He's a gunfighter in hell, going around through hell, taking his guns. He's shooting all the demons and uh, having a good time, tracking them down. This was an excellent book. The art is phenomenal. 
Joe Vigil, just like his brother Tim Vigil, who does um, Faust, and they've done some. They did EO, or Tim did EO also, which was a book we reviewed last year. Uh, they are phenomenal, phenomenal black and white artists. They put extreme, extreme detail into their stories, into their artwork, and uh, the characters look real. Uh, they all the detail, the fine, minute, the backgrounds, the ground, everything is really good. And the story to go along with it was uh, was very good. And uh, I thought that it was a good story. I thought actually I thought it was an excellent story. And I think that uh, it's something that if you're an adult, you should pick up because it's worth reading. How about you, Steve? Well, I agree with Michael 100 percent on this one. This book was phenomenal. The, the book opens up with a priest sitting there talking with a demon, and he has in a jar two of uh, the gunslinger's bullets, and they're actually alive. And I mean, and I, didn't, I didn't even notice that. Steve showed that to me right before we They're went actual on. little bullets with faces on them and teeth, and when they yeah. shoot the demons, they eat their way through them to yeah. kill them. It's really wild because, like Michael said, there's so much minute detail in this book. You got to sit there and read it two or three times to catch little things you didn't see before. Yeah. This book was phenomenal. For a mature reader, I would definitely recommend picking mm. this one up. These are going to be hard to find, I'll tell you that much. These aren't just going to be at every store, but if you can find it, Pick it up, check the storyline out. Uh, I would definitely highly recommend this one. I give this one a definite thumbs up. Bling. So for our first book this week, which was Elseworlds number seven, Detective Comics with Batman, I gave it a thumbs up. And I didn't like it at all. Second book was Gunfighters from Hell or In Hell. And uh, that's from Rebel Studios. Both like that one. Liked it a lot. That's it for Dual Review this show. Okay, welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Comics. This week's feature is Planet Comics number one from Fiction House Magazines. The date is January 1940. The book was Fiction House's fourth anthology title of Continuing Characters. It was the first and by far the most successful science fiction run in comics. As with other books, Jumbo and or two other books jumbo and jungle this title had no competition for many years fiction house's style of action-packed covers and art made up for the routine plotting lasting 14 years this issue included the origin of aura land of jupiter by briefer Flint Baker and the Red Comic began in this issue, and work by Will Eisner and Lou Fine were included. There are an estimated 160 copies of Planet Comics number one left in existence, with 10 in near mint to mint condition. In good condition, Planet Comics is worth around $625. While in near mint condition, it can fetch up to $5,000. Five big bills. Okay, this week I got something a little bit different here. I'm going to go through a various amount of books here and let you know what I thought of them and if they're worth picking up. For my first one, I'm going with Satan 6 Hellspawn, number one of six. Don't bother. For my second one, The X-Men Annual. This book was phenomenal. Pick this one up. Great writing, great color. Bang, got to get it. For my third one, DC came out with a new one, Penguin. This one, it's got three separate stories and... I would think twice about picking this one up because it's a little iffy. For my fourth one, fifth one, Stormwatch number 25. This is the issue they jumped right to number 25. This one was okay, and I'm leaving it at okay. The artwork was great, but the storyline was eh, iffy. For my next one, Robin number seven. This is the conclusion of the Night Quest series. This one was hot. This one's a couple weeks old, but pick this one up if you can get it, because this is the pre prelogue to the start of the end. For the next one, The Huntress. This was a waste of money. Do not pick this one up. DC wasted time. This is a Frank Miller imitation. The artwork was lousy, the car was lousy. And for my last one, Superman Doomsday. Book number two. This one describes everything you want to know about Doomsday, how he became the apocalypse. Pick this one up. If you can find it, this has got to be one of the top books out there in the market right now. 
And that's it for my quick little review on books. And each and every week, I'll try and do that for you. Now we've got a little book review for you. This is called Comic Book Superstars, put out by Krause Publications. It's edited by Don and Maggie Thompson of Comic Book uh, Comic Buyer's Guide. Uh, cost is $16.95. This is a hardcover book. It's an excellent book covering hundreds of comic book creators and background personnel. From the hundreds of forms that they sent out to all these different creators, many of them sent replies and those are the people that are put in the book. And only people that, had, that have had work published are, were included. People that had work in progress or work pending that have never been published before were not included. The good points for this book it's alphabetical, you have mailing addresses for many people. Some of them you have to go through uh, uh, CBG and they forward your letters. Uh, you, get, you get their date of birth so you know how old they are, you get their education, and you get previous and current work that they have done. Now, the cons for this book. If a pro didn't send a form in, he's not included in the book, or she. Uh, there are quite a few important people that are missing from the book people that should be included that are important to the industry and I think that if they do an updated version they should get these people to fill out forms because obviously they already have all these people so they've got less that they have to work on but get the people that are still out there that are important um, obviously if the people are dead too there was a, there's some important people that are dead that should be included in the book it's a valuable reference guide overall it's an excellent tool and it provides information about people you might not have known before. And it's, it's definitely a book that would be worth, if you got $17 to spend, it would be worth picking up because it's a very, very good book. Okay, for my preview this week, I've got something very, very special by Malibu Comics and Malibu Films. Firearm, the movie. This is the limited edition Firearm number zero that comes with the comic book. This one is very, very, very hard to find, but here, uh, here on Comics TV, we got our connections. Uh, most of the comic book stores around Western New York will not carry this. It's limited to only 30,000 copies, but I heard through the rumor grapevine that there's only 10,000 copies available to the public. So don't quote me on that. We're going to find out for sure. But I'll tell you what, I watched this and I thought it was phenomenal. You're going to see more and more companies starting to come out with a, a video previewing the first comic book. Now, if you've been following Firearm, this starts the whole thing off. Explains who he is, what he does, and why he is where to fight the ultras. Now, this one, like I said, if you can pick it up, pick it up. It's a little pricey at $14.95, but you'll find out this is definitely, definitely worth the money. Pick it up if you can. As soon as Benny gets the name of Kant's drug contact, as a favor, I get five minutes alone with Charlie to discuss Vera, her past, and how the hell a worthless prat like Kant knows anything about this. Don't be holding out. Talk. I'm talking. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the truth. Charlie. Charlie, you've never been to prison before, have you? Let's get shot at. Exactly one year ago, A.C. Farley, along with Peter Laird 
and Michael Dooney started the Next imprint, envisioning Next as a creator-owned banner under which they could explore superhero-oriented themes. The three founders quickly set to work creating a new series. Now, after a year-long hiatus, Bioneers number one is ready to hit the stands in August. A.C. Farley single-handedly takes on all of the creative chores from writing and drawing to inking and coloring. Gen a lot of times you won't have a, a, a person doing a series to actually do coloring also. In Bioneers number one, an elite force called Team Dragon Fighter struggles to keep its existence a secret despite intense public scrutiny. Trained and equipped to act as a countermeasure against terrorism and espionage as well as extraordinary threats and disasters, Team Dragon Fighters is made up of two bioengineered bio super beings, four robots, and test pilots and specialists. Published bi-monthly, each issue will feature two trading counts, cards bound in. In addition, if you read the Xenotech and Superheroes, uh, Stupid Heroes titles, you will find cross-references that add layers to the storylines. Now that's Bioneers number one coming out in August. This is the end of our show for this week and we've got a couple things first off we want to know if there's any interest out there from any of our local buffalo fans that want to start a comic club now what this would be would be a club that would meet on a monthly basis maybe we'll rotate in different stores um we'll we'll see about that but we want to know if there's an interest there's a lot of cities that have comics clubs people what they do is they go and they trade comics they they uh sell comics to each other they have a discussion like maybe they're going to say okay next month we're going to talk about valiant comics everybody comes and they talk about valiant comics for whatever you know and then there's um, other things that go along with it but if anybody's interested we need you to write and let us know secondly we're looking for a couple dedicated viewers again it has to be in the buffalo area because we're not flying anybody in but a couple dedicated local viewers that watch our show all the time that want to help us improve it we think that comics tv as a whole is a good show but obviously any show could use improvement so we feel if we could get a couple of our good fans to come in we'll take you out to lunch or something and we'll sit and we'll talk you tell, tell us, us what we're doing wrong what's missing yeah you know stuff like that little stuff right and we'll uh we'll take your uh, take your opinions and maybe we'll work them in and we'll compensate you for your time too yeah we'll give you lunch <laughs> steve oh okay in uh future up and coming weeks we're gonna try and show you bits and clips from firearm number zero I'm, just to yeah let you obviously take. we can't show you the whole thing because malibu probably wouldn't be too happy no <laughs> not at all but it, it's definitely worth it we will show you a little bit here or there that's so, it for this week. That's it for this week. And as we say each and every week, when you purchase a comic, take care of it. Read it. Just don't throw it on a shelf. Don't let your mother hit it with a vacuum cleaner. But next time you purchase a comic, tell them you've seen it on Comics TV. See ya. Bye-bye. Each and every week. Each and every week. Often.